dead meme. Hey there, guys. Back for some Horizon XI. So, I have gotten some comments describing that the um, some of the videos I've made for uh, addressing economic issues aren't super friendly to new players. Basically, um, yeah, some players are 20-year veterans and others are joining us for the first time for their first adventure. So I'm going to go right down to the very, very basics to try and help some of these newer players make some currency. So the most important thing that you're going to need is you're going to need Signet or Signet. I'm not sure exactly how it's called. Uh, I'm not going to argue that with people. It's a waste of time. This buff that I've got highlighted in the top left here, this is Signet. If you go outside of your of the town and kill a creature that yields experience, you've got the chance of gaining crystals. Crystals are required for crafters to make any item in the game. It is literally the foundation of the economy. Nothing happens without crystals. How do you get Signet? You find one of these NPCs with the funny abbreviations next to them. They're different depending on what territory you're from. But you'll target him and you ask him to cast Signet on you. Now your Signet will last. Um, its duration depends on what rank you are and what level you are in the Conquest Tally, like where your nation's sitting. So I'm rank 3, so I get 3 hour Signet, but I'm second place or Sandoria is second place, so therefore I get an extra hour. So hopefully that makes sense. Get Signet. Go outside, kill creatures. That will give you crystals. That will allow you to participate in the base level of the economy. Some crystals are worth more than others. Uh, fire, Wind, and Dark. Those are three that you really, really want that are accessible in the early levels. Now, since we've been talking about Conquest, if we talk to this guy, you have... I want to spend my conquest points. Depending on what rank you are, you have access to more things. I'm only rank 3, so a lot of this stuff not available to me. So, at rank 3, I can say get myself a Royal Squire's Dagger. And this doesn't sound great, but this thing sells okay in the auction house. I'm seeing around like 6.5k for it. You have to get to rank 3 though. Not easy, not uh, something you're going to do off the bat. So, let's show you what you probably will end up on. So at rank one, there is the Royal Archer set. There's the Royal Archer Longsword, the Bandana. The boots aren't so great, uh, but for the most part, the Royal Archer Seti sells okay. The gloves are okay because they have plus three attack on them. And the... Oh, we're only ranked two, so they're not all available to... to oh, that's another concept overall. And the head is okay because it gives a bit of agility and can be worn by almost everyone. So you would purchase these with a thousand conquest points. You gain conquest points by having Signet on you, exiting in the city, killing creatures that yield experience points. So hopefully that is clear enough. That is the foundation of the economy. Now I'm going to show you something that you should be doing while you're out killing creatures. So I've got a um, window, I got a browser open here. If we look at this quest, this is for Bastoke. This person in the Bastoke markets. If you go here, you can take a quest where she would like you to bring her a wild onion, a trent bulb, or a sleep shroom. You can repeat this quest as many times as you want, but you must zone. I don't know if that's the case on this server. I, um, not a fan of Bastoke. I don't go there unless I have to. So hopefully someone else can clear that up. But I'm going to assume that they went with the tried and true classic method that if you trade one of these things to Selma, you're gonna have to zone. So we'll get her out of here. Flash in the pan is another one. Pretty much this that character's next door neighbor. She wants four Flintstones. And you can come back every 15 minutes, I believe it is. And you can trade in four Flintstones and you'll get 100 gil. Repeatable. Now, uh, not ideal because of how uh, obnoxious that is. When we go to Sandoria, which I feel has some of the better repeatable quests, 
Not the best, but better. You can get two bat wings. You're going to be killing bats to get your wind crystals anyway, because they are valuable. And you're going to turn him into this guy. He's a northern Sandoria. You just talk to him once, and then he'll start accepting the, uh, the bat wings from you two at a time. And you'll get 100 gil each, so you get 200 every time you do this. And in Sandoria as well, we've got a Flintstone quest that doesn't require you to zone because it's not garbage. So in southern Sandoria, in the Lion's, uh, Sp the Lion's Spring Tavern, it's near the Mog House, as you see there. You trade this character for Flintstones after speaking with her. You could do this over and over and over, and you get 100 gil. And the Merchant's Bidding. This is probably the most famous one that uh, everyone seems to know about. You trade three rabbit hides to a character in Southern Sandoria next to the Leatherworkers Guild. This character will give you 120 gil, I believe it is. Let's take a look. 120 gil for three rabbit hide. So, not amazing, but it's a solid income. You're killing rabbits anyway for XP. And now on to Windhurst. Windhurst has probably got the most lucrative um, repeatable quests. Creepy crawlies. These poor caterpillars, they're dead. Like, people are genociding these poor guys because they probably have the best return on, on investment or, or, or work being done. So, there's a character in Windhurst Woods. This is her. She is here. She will accept three silk, or crawler silk, and three crawler calluses that you can, after speaking to her once, and you can just trade as many as you can acquire to her. So this, the uh, silks come from the crawlers, and so does the callus. So basically murder those things as much as you can. Now, what's really interesting is the next one. Um, I'm not completely sure how to say this NPC's name. But in Windhurst Woods, in the very, very top, there's a character who will accept four Yagudo beads, and she gives you 200 gil, I believe it is. Let's quickly look. Yes, it's 200 gil. It's repeatable. But the uh, these items are selling for roughly 2.8 to 3k a stack in the auction house. So 12 of these Yagudo beads are selling for approximately 3k a stack, so it's almost double what you would get for turning it in. So there is an addendum that I would like to put in here. You, uh, If you want to unlock Ninja and have any spells available to you, you probably don't want to uh, do... You don't want to sell all of your Yagudo beads. You want to trade in, I think it's 53 total turn-ins or quest repeats and that will give you at least rank 3, and that lets you start unlocking some of the ninja magic. But if you're hurting for money, you're not going to play ninja. Ninja is a very expensive job. So kill the Yugudo, steal their beads. They also drop money. They drop wind crystals. Very, very valuable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the links for all of these, at least to the baseline of their quest, in the description. And you could use that to confirm whether or not you want to do these quests for the area you're in. Because I understand you may not be able to see. <laughs> and I know I'm not giving you enough time to read them because you'll get bored and you'll click off. So one thing to keep in mind, there are other strategies. You know what the repeatable quest items are. If I want to build, say I'm from Vast Oak for some reason, and I want to build up reputation in Sandoria, what would I probably end up doing? I'll go to Sandoria, I'll buy a whole bunch of rabbit hides, and just trade them into the quest giver. Now, I won't get the gill back, because typically the items are worth more than what you receive, but individuals who are wealthy will throw money down to get rep done. So if you say you're from Windhurst, and you're killing those, those, uh, those Arabs out there, and you're getting rabbit hides, and you're like, this is no good to me, I'm level 10, I'm not going to get to Sandori anytime soon. Get a stack of them, throw them in the auction house. Someone with more money than time will buy them off you to get this stuff done. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, if there's something that I missed, I know there's more repeatable quests out there, but these are the ones that I feel are easy, easy to do. But if you know one that I didn't mention that's good, like say fishing, I will never touch fishing in this game. It's obnoxious. 
God bless you guys who do it. But if you are, if you know you got some information for that, you could throw that in there and help those players who have the patience to deal with fishing. And, and again, if the video is helpful, a like and a sub would be pretty cool. If you uh, have any additional information, please throw it in the comments below. Thanks for showing up.